A good midday Monday, Roger Hill, Velcro Weather Hazards forecaster. This is the Velcro Weather Hazards Outlook. We're undergoing significant, some would say catastrophic flooding, and this is taking place right now with flood warnings all the way from the Massachusetts border up to the Canadian border, right across the state of Vermont. There has been some flooding down a little bit further to the south of us, and this continues to uh, influx or a feed of subtropical air and even tropical moisture that is now pushed along this sort of frontal boundary in this trough of lower pressure interacting. And of course, it's producing heavy rainfall, some of that uh, very heavy rainfall over saturated soils and causing a lot of flooding. We'll get to that again. Now, the rest of the country, what's going on and why is this happening? This is the culprit here. This is uh, the Hudson Bay. And just south of the Hudson Bay, a little west of James Bay, we have this upper level low. This is very anomalous for this time of year. Part of the reason for this is we have uh, blocking high pressure, high latitude blocking located over portions of uh, Greenland and then back into uh, far north and eastern Canada and then also up into parts of Alaska. That high latitude blocking is more of a feature you would find in the spring say late spring and certainly not near high summer so the concentration of all this moisture and heat works its way up the coast and hence right into the state of vermont uh, incidentally this flooding is also pushing into parts of eastern quebec we're going to make this uh, quick and fast here so this is uh, validated at two o'clock this afternoon on this monday so what you can see here is that heavier rainfall moving right across vermont and you can see another round of heavier rainfall working in. That's going to be into the morning hours tomorrow. Finally, things push north of our region. And then thereafter, it does look like we're going to see uh, maybe a possibility of some scattered showers and thunderstorms return late part of the day tomorrow. Not showing up on the modeling, but it does show up on Wednesday. Right now, Wednesday is probably the driest day. But even there, a pop-up isolated shower or thunderstorm can't be ruled out. And of course, we have this wet moisture feedback process. And when you have temperatures uh, warming up, well, we'll see highs basically in the 80s. You're looking at temperatures uh, uh, very sufficient to cause more convection. So it uh, looks like at night, no problems. During the day, we have another weather system pushing in. Once again, a trough of lower pressure pushing through. It looks like this is going to affect us on uh, Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. And it looks like that's going to linger into Friday and so on and so forth. One more day for the outlook period. Looks like we dry out in the morning hours, of course, and then we're back into more convection. And beyond the period, showers and thunderstorms in the forecast, as far as the eye can see, unfortunately, I don't see any really good days coming that will give us uh, two or three days of dry weather. So farmers in need to cut hay, folks in need to get maintenance work done. It doesn't look very good. Okay, you're looking at three hourly QPF, and you can see the main event here with all the heavy rain and whatnot. That's going to linger into Tuesday morning, maybe a little bit into Tuesday afternoon. And from there, we're back into the sort of daily convection of showers and thunderstorms. You put it all together for the total QPF, it's quite significant. Look at that. We average greater than four inches. And this blue line here, that's the latest uh, global forecast model run, GFS, and it's even higher than that, up around five inches. You can see the bulk of which comes to an end and we sort of level that thing off, but we get these little daily upticks from the convection that's going to be firing up uh, just daily going into next weekend. Quick look at the Weather Prediction Center, seven total day of quantitated uh, precipitation forecast or accumulated precip. This little red spot here is five inches and the indications are we're looking at generally four inches in this general area here. Of course, this is uh, from 12Z, so roughly from 8 o'clock this morning onward. And looking at climatology here, the 2-meter temperature anomalies uh, from the Climate Reanalyzer, you can see we're just about near normal to a little bit below normal for this time of year. And this is our high latitude blocking we've been talking about. I mentioned it's forcing this area of low pressure to become fairly strong, and you can see it's colder than normal back up in parts of, uh, what is that, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Ontario, and then warmer than normal, way warmer than normal, up in the northern part of Quebec. And, of course, this is where there has been some wildfires. And then back into here, this is going to be swinging a lot of that smoke southward and then eventually eastward. But as long as this is in position right now, bringing in this colder air, this is not moving very fast. So the consequences are it's bringing a lot of tropical moisture up right along the coast and right into the city. Next five days of high temperatures from the Moss uh, outlook here. Meteorological outlook put statistics are 
Zero are neutral, so it's weighted over the next five days. Uh, a little bit above normal just off the coast and to our south and west. And about three days later, looks like this, not a whole lot of change. Again, this is some of that colder air that's wrapping around this upper low. Seven day graphic for tropical weather. This is a system of 30% chance of a cyclone in the next seven days. This would be pretty high latitude, so it would go out and away from us, so no issues to worry about there in the tropics. And as you can see, we got numerous flash flood warnings, mostly along the spine of the Green Mountains, give or take 30 miles or so. That's it from here, Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.